What tank should you invite to your Mythic Plus group? All tanks, come on, just invite all tanks. But some are better, some are worse, and some uh, people don't even actually play. And in Mythic Plus, sometimes it matters what spec you have. And we're going to be looking at the meta for tanks in Mythic Plus as we're gearing towards the end of Season 3. How have things shaped up, shaken up, constructed uh, the rankings for tanks? And we're going to start it off with blood decay as always because alphabetical order that's important blood decay is actually well to be fair i'll probably have to say this about all the tanks but the tanks are doing okay right this is probably the most balanced tanks have ever been in their entire life now blood decay of course has its own little niche and strengths and bonuses with you know you kind of never having the need of a healer pretty much ever with the increase in tank sustainability the last couple of uh, patches you're actually pretty pretty self-sufficient and you do have a bunch of tools at your disposal to negate a lot of the stuff that would probably hurt other tanks particularly magic damage is really good with ams and all of that stuff i think uh just looking at the last week because we have more concrete data was last week when it was tyrannical the highest key that a blood decay has done is a 31 the highest ever key that has been completed is a 32 so realistically blood decay is not that bad but there has to be kind of like a difference between specs so you don't just see all of them into s tier or a tier because that that just it makes the video boring so i will put blood decay around b tier now over the course of the season and over the course of certain dungeons blood decay can go up and down in the rankings depending on what dungeon you do depending on what party composition you have because in some dungeons it could be a tier in some dungeons it could be c tier and in some dungeons it might not just be played because you are probably playing a rogue with an awesome wallpaper when you start up your PC because how else are you going to get into the roguey vibes if you don't see your own character with the blood soaked dagger and the poison caked sword or is it the other way around point is it looks badass and it's mine you cannot have it but you could have another one if you do decide to become a patreon on patreon.com slash marcellian online haha <laughs> you actually will be able to get a customizable 4k wallpaper with your character but you know that's just you know the kind of goodies that you can get from our patreon and supporting the content but you will actually be supporting the content that we do it helps us a lot to be able to make more of these videos and bring them to you thank you for considering supporting the patreon platform that we have and thank you to all the patrons who are currently supporting the content you guys make this possible and now we can move to the next tank brewmaster currently the proud holder of the least amount of parses which means the least amount of playtime that this tank has out of all of the tanks which is surprising because i thought it was going to be prop warrior just looking at all the things brewmaster is i mean at this point listen we're, we still need to have the current week play out to see exactly where it ranked but last week brewmaster was the tank that did the the, the smallest uh, key out of everybody I obviously I'm not a plus 30 key pusher. I don't know exactly all of the details. I can only imagine that Tyrannical does not favor Brewmaster as much because Brewmaster is usually going similar to Bloody Key up and down in terms of the rankings. I'm gonna put it into C tier, but even with it having done the smallest key in the last uh, in the last Tyrannical week, that was a 29. It was a goddamn 29, man. Listen, the worst tank being 29 and about three keys lower than the best tank. I think this is probably one of the best iterations of tank balance that we've had so far. Maybe actually the best. And I am saying that because a personal favorite of mine that has been a personal favorite of mine throughout this uh, season is Bear. And Bear is also doing really good. Bear is actually... Okay, so here's the thing, right? Bear is around B tierish. It kind of interchanges its places with Blood Decay every now and again, depending on, you know, what week it is, what dungeon it is. Similarly, as opposed to Blood Decay, Bear is particularly good at physical damage, probably the best, if not the second best, at physical damage, because, you know, you can just get armor cap, and that's really great. But it kind of suffers with magical damage, and since, uh,. You know, the best thing that you have against magical damage is probably the fact that you will stack haste verse on bear, which is, first of all, very good. And some frenzy regen, it's just still not the same. It's frenzy regen is not death strike, even though sometimes it heals as much or almost as much as death strike. You just death strike a hundred times more in a dungeon than you frenzy regen, or maybe even more than that. But bear is also, if we look at, uh, I think there's um, 
one person right now, I think he's called, or she's called Squish Vegan. Uh, number one bear currently actually doing keys in uh, in the highest of the realms. If you really look at all of the sea of Vengeance Demon Hunters uh, clearing the highest of keys, you see this bear every now and again. Now, does this mean that bear is S tier because it can duke it out with Vengeance? Maybe, maybe it has the potential, but that's only like one player. And there's a couple of other players that are really, really good on Bear that are actually carrying Bear through the overall rankings, tier lists, um, IO scores, whatever you want to call it. But the majority of the Bears are just not there. Maybe the majority of the Bears are playing Vengeance. However, Bear is actually really good. Last week, I think it did a 31, which is Pog, which is really good. I would have probably put it into A tier because of that, but that's... Probably not going to happen because of the next tank, which is Prot Paladin. That obviously goes into A tier. Prot Paladin is actually a tank that dukes it out with Vengeance. And uh, one of my suspicions is that the only reason we don't see more Prot Paladins in the 31s and the 32s is probably because Vengeance is just slightly better. Probably just offers a little bit more utility, a little bit more reliability. And people just gravitate towards that a little bit more maybe it's a safer pick because if a prop paladin can do 31s 32s i don't see why you can do more of those but it's likely just a smidge behind vengeance maybe a, a smidge more either way um that's kind of the only reason why i cannot put it into s tier because it's just not quite yet the best which i kind of ruined who's going to be s tier but i think you probably guessed that already anyway uh, but, I mean, Prop Paladin is incredibly good. It does have some glaring weaknesses with uh, Consecration. And hey, if you really want, you can look at how Archon.gg also ranks Prop Paladin. Puts it all the way into A tier next to Bear. Um, so, they're kind of close together. But I think Prop Paladin just consistently does a few more keys and has done throughout the season. But, you know, throughout the season, that doesn't really matter. It just matters where we are at the moment. And where we are at the moment is with Prop Warrior also a B tier spec. I honestly thought this was going to be the bottom of the barrel because uh, it kind of has been for the season. Which, I mean, that's kind of Prop Warrior's thing for a couple of years. I haven't seen Prop Warrior be like giga, giga, giga meta properly, probably since BFA. It had some niche moments, I believe, in Shadowlands for a brief amount of time. Um, I think it was stated to be really good at the beginning of Dragonfly, but it got nerfed. I, I don't really recall because it didn't last very long. But Pro Warrior is around the beat. B tier is probably where, you know, the good tanks are. The You know, you're, you're okay to play this. Probably the best uh, physical damage mitigator in the game because I was talking about Bear earlier. Probably the worst magical damage mitigator in the game, which is uh, not doing itself any favors. And even despite that, although I guess we could say the same about Brewmaster, despite being so weak against magical damage, it still manages to duke it out with the likes of Blood Decay, which is kind of like the polar opposite. And some of the harder dungeons, the hardest dungeons being thrown in Everbloom, those are particularly rich in magical damage. That's kind of where you're going to be chunked the most as a tank. And seeing as how it managed to do that. It's really great, particularly Pro Warrior has some unique strengths with Spell Reflect, where, let's say, Throne of the Thunder, you can use a Spell Reflect at the first boss. I, f I forgot what it is, the, the cast that you cannot kick. Uh, that's a particularly really good moment for, for Pro Warrior, especially in Waycrest Manor. That's like Spell Reflect uh, Bonanza right there. So there are pros and cons to playing a Pro Warrior, although you are probably one of the most reliant on a healer tank. Maybe second to Brewmaster. And to nobody's surprise, Vengeance Demon Hunter takes the cake. This tank is broken. Obviously, uh, we have some bears and some prop paladins that can d do kind of like the same level keys as a Vengeance. However, Vengeance just does everything way better. And if we look at, let's say, I don't know, just to kind of point it out, although take this with a grain of salt, if we look at Warcraft Logs and how Warcraft Logs sees tanks, you can see Vengeance just kind of a little bit in front of everybody else. Vengeance is just giga turbo broken. It's incredibly tanky, it has decent self-sustain, probably the second best self-sustain uh, behind Blood Decay. It has some pretty gnarly defensives where you rotate your demon spikes with your tier set of uh, flame sigil. 
and also you're spreading your fiery brand depending on what build you play some of the top tanks i believe Yoda, in some of his recent logged keys, he's been, not been playing even Last Resort, which is the cheat death. So you don't even need the cheat death to be able to actually push the highest of keys, just raw, raw DPS and HPS rather with uh, with Spirit Bomb. But Vengeance has undergone a, a pretty good rework. It's probably maybe a little bit too good with Illuminated Sigils. You having double Sigil for every pack. I also played this and even as a, a pretty dog, Vengeance Demon Hunter myself with very little experience, I was able to do stuff that I struggled with other tanks to do and it it's just ridiculous. It's a league in and of itself, which is why it's the only one S tier. You can probably, depending on the week and the dungeon, you might be able to see Bear and Blood Decay hop into A tier next to Prop Paladin, leaving Warrior in B consistently and Brewmaster in C consistently consistently but that's not very also consistent like i said so that's why we have the discrepancy between sa and b tier once again all of this with a grain of salt guys like the, the balance is incredible uh this this time around and we're never gonna have all specs equal because you know they each have their particular strengths when it comes to certain affixes certain mechanics uh some of them have this spell some of them don't have this spell so things like that actually matter when it comes to a tank but you can also play tanks for pure fun and you should play tanks for pure fun and hey we ranked those as well in this video we recommend you check it out maybe you agree maybe you disagree and you can tell us otherwise in the comments below